Baby Bomb 2, Chapter 15, The Longest Night. The evening after the babies are born, you return home with Miles. You lug the carriers inside and set them on the couch. The twins are fast asleep, their little feet twitching occasionally as they snooze away. Home at last. A lot changed these last couple days. I know. I'm glad to be home with my family. I have been looking forward to uh, having all four of us together for months. Just us. Miles checks the carriers to see that Justine and Ben are still fast asleep. Then turns to you. Remind me, I got us a small something. He retrieves a small photo album from a nearby shelf alongside a print of a picture he took of you and the twins at the hospital. Miles, this is beautiful. Hey, I've got to be good for some keepsakes. As your little ones grow up, you will have the chance to add photos to your album, each one commemorating a special moment. Collect all five or more to unlock a special scene with your twins at the end of the book. You take the picture from Miles and attach it to the first page. Adorable. You return the photo album to the shelf, and then hear Justine and Ben stir from their slumber. Good. Are my two favorite people finally awake? Yes, yes they are. You pick up Ben, holding him close to your chest, whilst Miles retrieves Justine. There's another part of the family you need to meet, little ones. The two of you carry the twins over to Thumper's cage. Her nose scrunches up as she sniffs at their small feet. Justine's leg twitches suddenly, and Thumper jumps back. <laughs> oh, all these little things must be uh, pretty scary for the both of you. But I'm sure you'll be best friends in no time. You and Miles settle yourselves on the couch just then. Boone and Pitt run over and jump up next to you, sniffing Ben and Justine in your arms. Boom, Pete, careful. They're still small. <laughs> Pitt's head cocks the side as she watches Ben squirm in your arms. His arm taps Pitt's nose and she flinches. Ow. That's alright, Pitt. He's just moving a bit. He won't hurt you. You pet Pitt with your free arm to calm her down. She settles against her side, still wary of Ben's flying arms. You turn to Miles as you rock Ben in your arms. If we want to survive these next couple weeks, we need to follow this strict cycle. Wake up, change diapers, feed, sleep, repeat. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you think you're gonna get sleep. It's adorable. Sleep already sounds nice for me. Mmm, that's the most important stab. They need uh, a sleep-inducing environment, and if we don't get them to sleep, they'll end up overtired. Then we'll just have angry, crying, tired babies, and the only solution is to deal with them until they calm down. Let's avoid that at all costs. With the babies now awake, you and Miles hurry the twins to the nursery and ready yourselves at the changing to stations, each with a babbling baby in front of you. Remind, remember, we need to place a new diaper, wipe their butt, throw away the old, and fasten the new one. It, this is, no, no, I've been doing this for 18 years, no. Don't worry, Ben, we'll get you all cleaned up. I need to... You place a fresh diaper beneath him. He squirms nonstop as you wipe his butt. You gingerly move his legs, careful not to bend anything too much. New parents, folks. New parents. How are you supposed to do this? I don't want to break him. You throw the diaper away, then carefully fasten the new one around his waist. Look at us, Ben. We've got this down, don't we? Not bad, Jim. We did it. We didn't break the babies. Ah, uh, this pairing stuff ain't too hard. <laughs> oh, is someone's tummy rumbling? 
You bounce Justine in your arms and smile, stick spin in his. You awkwardly tug your top down as you settle in the rocking chair. If you bottle feed Ben first, I'll nurse Justine, and we can trade off so they uh, both get the yummy goodness. Miles readies a bottle and begins to feed Ben while Justine nestles close against her breast. Her crying grows louder and louder, but she finally latches on and cries as she hungrily eats. There we go. That's much better, isn't it? Ben's hungry. Almost uh, through the bottle of formula. When Justine pauses eating, you burp her, tapping her back with a firm but gentle touch after a few bads. Spit up spews all over your lap. Miles hands you a burp cloth as you attempt to clean up the mess. Uh, perks of motherhood, I guess. Uh, I should have realized how gross babies can be. You're lucky you're cute. You trade babies with Miles and nestle Ben against your other breast. He eats for several minutes. <laughs> Not if you know Ben. <laughs> Let's have a large yawn. <laughs> Looks like someone's sleepy from all that milk. Maybe this will help you nod off. Binky's here for you. Bop one pass fire to Ben's mouth and hand Miles one for Justine. We lay them down in the crib and in no time all at all the twins' eyes flutter shut. Said no parent ever. As they snooze soundly, you retrieve the bunny plushie from the baby baskets and set it next to the crib. Don't forget the special message. You squeeze the paws, your voice echoes back from the bunny. Hi, little ones. I love you with all my heart. You're the best thing that's ever happened to me. Don't you ever forget that. I hope they remember this message later. I don't know what the hell that sound was, but okay, Pixelberry. We just have to keep playing. As the recording continues, the twins shift and smile as they sleep. Oh, precious. Look at their feet twitching. <laughs> they must get that uh, from you. You playfully roll your eyes at Miles as you fix your outfit. After setting up the baby monitor nearby, the two of you carefully tiptoe out of the room. Return to the living room and collapse on the couch. Your eyes grow heavy as you rest against Miles' shoulder. So tired. You didn't sleep much at the hospital. At least now the babies will be out for a couple of hours, and we can finally get a nap in. Is it just me, or has this been too easy? Uh, don't think about it too much. Let's just enjoy the peace while it lasts. Just then, your phone chimes with a new text message. It's a message from Baby Baskets. I uh, wonder what they uh, have for us. We at Baby Baskets want to congratulate you on the birth of your little one. We hope you're enjoying every precious moment together. As a thanks for subscribing, we want went ahead and sent you a special gift. Check your front door now! What did they deliver? Rush to the front door and quickly open the package, sitting there to find a basket of goodies with so much inside. Damn, they went all out. Hmm, it's everything I could ever want. Magazines, champagne, face masks, bath salts. Where are you gonna start? Hmm. I can't wait to soak in these bath salts. This mama needs a long soak in the bathtub after pushing two babies out. You deserve it. You look down at the spit-up stain, your clothes, and grimace. Uh, I should take care of those. Wait, I can help. Miles hurries out of the room and returns with a long, flowing, pastel pink dress, soft, intricate floral adornments, pepper and bodice, the embroidered vines cascading down the length of the dress. Look at you, pulling out all the stops. Seemed comfy and easy to nurse in. And the fabric repels stains. You're kidding. Something that won't get ruined by spit-up? I didn't test it, but it might be worth a shot. Wear this beautiful pink dress to stay cozy and make the endless night ahead of you uh, easier. Yay, it's kind of pretty. You slip into the dress, a sliver of luxurious fabric gracing your shoulders as the rest glides down your body. 
You've done it again, Miles. I love it. You look at Cassidy. Real good. How good are we talking? He smirks and leans in to capture your lips to a tender kiss. He slides his arms around your waist, pulling you closer. That answer your question? You kiss him once more before snuggling into a side, completely content. For now, but uh, you might have to remind me again later. Miles sets the baby monitor on the coffee table and then wraps a fluffy blanket around you both. This is what I needed. Ma, sleep. I've got you. Miles kisses the top of your head, but just as you're on the edge of slumber! <laughs> you jolt awake in Miles' arms and look at the baby monitor, Justine squirms at the crib, crying loudly. Soon enough, Ben wakes up crying too. It's barely been an hour. Well, they're awake. The silence was too good to last. Was so close to falling asleep, and this blanket is so cozy. Mm, there'll be time for more of this later. I'll hold you to that. The two of you hurry to the nursery, each picking up one of the twins. You rock Justine back and forth in your arms. I think I feel a headache incoming. Maybe a diaper change would help. You nod as the twins scream and fill the room. Miles goes to change Ben, flinching at the mustard mess inside of the diaper. That, that explains it. As Miles takes care of Ben, Justine squirms furiously on the table in front of you, crying her lungs out. <coughs> oh, shh, Justine, it's okay. Mommy's gonna change her diaper. Try to focus on the task at hand as Justine flails and cries impossibly louder. Please swipe, throw, fasten. Focusing through the screams, you laid out a fresh diaper and get Justine cleaned up. Doing your best to ignore her own mustard mess. Please stop crying. Mommy loves you. <laughs> Eagerly drop the filthy diaper into the trash and finish up. You stand back, nodding at your work. Look, Justine, you've got a clean, beautiful diaper. Isn't that better? When the job's done, both diapers are changed. You rock the still-crying Justine in your arms as Miles handles Ben. <laughs> uh, maybe they're hungry. But they just ate. It can't be time yet, right? Mm, let the babies decide that. Worth a shot. Mm, we gotta stick to the cycle. <laughs> You're right. I don't think this will stop otherwise. You settle yourself into the rocking chair with Justine nestled against you. You pull down part of your dress to let Justine rest against your breast. That's so much easier. Good. And cries and grow louder as her hand bats against your clothes skin and she refuses to eat. Uh, take the damn milk already. <laughs> mm. <laughs> That's an experience, mother. Um <laughs> Mommy really wants you to eat. I promise you'll feel a lot better and you'll stop crying and maybe my headache will go away. No, 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 it's going to evolve into a what's that Pokemon? A migraine. Then you can sleep. God, I miss sleep. Ben won't eat either. Maybe they aren't hungry? Just then, Justine latches on at the same time Ben starts to eat from his bottle. Or they are. Silence. It never felt so good. After a few minutes, you burp Justine a little, then trade off babies with Miles again, switching sides. Ben latches on almost immediately. You flinch as he tugs at you. Ow, not so hard. <laughs> Imagine a baby making that noise. Holy shit, it's possessed. Luckily, he doesn't have teeth. Don't remind me, I have to look forward to that. Dap Ben's back, burping him, and it doesn't take long before he spits up on your dress. I see this is gonna be a regular problem. Welcome to parenthood. As you balance Ben in one arm, you grab a burp cloth and easily wipe away the spit from your dress. And it comes right off. But act now, for $19.99, you can get a second dress. Whoa, can't even tell it was there. Ah! <laughs> 
And they're crying again. Mm hmm. They just need some sleep. But you adjust your outfit, and Miles grabs the path wires, and the two of you uh, try to stick them to the twins' mouths. But they just spit them out. That worked before, now what? Let's try s swaddling them, see if that helps. I write some uh, have preferences. Arms out, legs out, very tight. We gotta think about how they sleep. Well, let's see what you like, Justine. I should swaddle her so her fix feet stick out, with a hand sticking out, as tightly as possible. As tightly as possible, let's try that. Grab Justine up tightly in her blanket, making sure all of her limbs are tucked inside. <laughs> Guessing that's a no. Let me... Miles finishes swaddling Bane with both feet out, then does the same to Justine, and soon both babies stop crying. Listen. No. <laughs> You're like a swaddle guru. Nah. Just remember their feet twitch. I hate you. I hate you so much. As you and Miles rock the babies back and forth, their eyes flutter shut. Listen, I haven't had enough coffee. You saw the twins in the crib settling into a peaceful slumber as their shoulders twoof, and feet touch. That's so cute. I wish we could just stay and watch them sleep forever. We should take this chance before they do wake back up. The two of you sneak out of the nursery and retreat to your bed. Miles wraps his arm around you, pulling your clothes. Uh, tired. Can't move. Seriously. Longest night ever. Ours is to keep this up. It's gotta get easier, right? Yeah, when they turn 18. No. Miles, this is the part where you're supposed to cheer me up. I'm just being honest. Parenting will never be easy. Doesn't mean we won't figure it out. Okay, maybe you're better at this cheering up thing than I give you credit for. I'll do one better. Let me help you escape. That sounds nice, but there's no way I'm getting out of this bed. You won't have to. Just close your eyes and relax. Miles' lips find your ear, whispering low and sweetly. <coughs> Say the word and we'll go some place better. Mm, now you're speaking my language. Escape the realities of parenting for a bit and explore a dream world with Miles. Take me away. I'm still waiting for someone to take me away. It's been 18 years. Finally, with a final glance at Miles, you close your eyes, letting darkness overcome you. Now, let your fears out. What do you see? I see the babies taking over my life, never letting me rest again. <laughs> I belong to all their whims. I get that, and I remember you're not alone. We can face it as a team. It's me and you against the world. I like the sound of that. So, where to? We can go anywhere. Japan, Cancun, Sweden. With all this alone time, a romantic candlelight dinner sounds perfect. Let's have dinner in space. The picture forms in your mind's eyes, Miles describes the scene <laughs> in space. Thousands, tens of thousands of miles away from the children. We're in a spaceship. Stars through the window, a lantern lit table waits for us. Hey look, it's across the void. It's reused assets that sadness. It's perfect. And fitting for what I'm wearing. And what's that? Oh. Smolder in the bedroom. <laughs> Counting sheep. Sleepy time pass with ultimate relaxation. Yes! The graduate, professional and practical. Listen, fam! We are smoldering in the bedroom. Yes. I thought I might give you a show. Even if it's a dream. You like what you see? You run a hand on your almost bare body, Miles eyes, dark with desire. Watch your every move. Without a doubt. 
Can you believe this body just had two babies a day ago? Power of the mind. Miles wraps an arm around you, pulling you tight against his body. But I'll always find you the sexiest in my arms. Hmm, even with the massive bags under my eyes? Bags and all. Your eyes wander down his body, taking in his appearance. Mmm. Well, I see you. We don't get to choose outfits for him. That's disappointing. Mmm. Are casual and relaxed. So what I normally wear. <laughs> it's a classic for a reason. Now, shall we order something? I'm starving. Right. The waiter approaches and says... Ah, you look uh, like a good mom, I can tell. Really? And how can you tell that? You're a beautiful and incredible woman. Hmm, this waiter is awfully flirtatious. Uh, he suddenly takes your drink and chucks it over his shoulder. How dare he? I never want to speak to him again. Hmm, good. But if you're, uh, you'd be so kind as to bring us two specials? Right away. In the blink of an eye, the waiter returns. He places the specials in front of you, and your stomach growls audibly. A galactic swirls abound. It's a cake. Ooh, star-filled cake. Is this to celebrate our uh, parental birthday? Signs point to yes. Big event sneak cake, always. Mmm, the swirl of sugar and chocolate is too much for this universe to handle. Can I steal a bite? Mm, go for it. It's definitely made with love. Damn. It's... Just then... One of the twins stirs on the monitor, pulling you out of your fantasy. Mm, not much time before we're back in it. One more story. We've got time. Close your eyes again, whisking yourself back to the dreamscape. Now, I believe you promised me a story. I ever tell you who my ideal woman was? Hmm, this I've got to hear. Strong, sexy, political. Says no one. Says fucking no one. Someone who, uh, never fought with me. Miles, I hate to break this to you, but we literally got into a fight the day we met. <clears throat> exactly. You're nothing like that woman. Hey. Jen. I could never dream you up. You're beautiful, determined, always challenging me. Best of all, you're real. Nice recovery, dude. Nice recovery. That deserves a kiss. Pull his lips to yours, kissing him softly, sweetly, but with a growing intensity. Jen. You trace his lower lip with your tongue, and he gasps in reply before deepening the kiss. He cups one of your cheeks in his hand and presses the other against the small of your back, begging you closer with each dodge. Mm, don't worry, give it five seconds and the children. Before you get too carried away, you press one final kiss to his forehead. As much as I'm enjoying this, we should probably at least try and get some sleep. Hmm, probably don't have a long left. Miles' voice lowers to a whisper, soothing you to sleep. Sweet dreams, Jen. You allow your eyes to shut and sleep to overtake you. When suddenly a familiar sound cries out. <laughs> Not again. I was over to see Ben awake, crying, and then sure enough, Justine wakes a moment later. Come on, both of you, Miles. Look over Miles, already fast asleep and snoring. Mm. Miles, wake up. You signed up for this. You knew what you were getting yourself to. I'm not the only one having a sleepless night. Alright, alright, I'm up. Eyes heavy with exhaustion. Probably because how damn bright this room is. You might want to turn off a light or two. That's why the kids are waking up. <laughs> you and Miles drearily follow the screams all the way to the nursery. Oh, my head hurts so much. Pick up Ben and notice something is leaking from his diaper. 
We've got a blowout. Oh boy. Those are the worst kinds. Miles goes to change Justine's diapers. You take on bins. Your eyes shut for the very first of seconds, yearning for sleep. <laughs> your eyes snap open, taking in the leaking, crying baby in front of you. Mm, please wipe through fasten. Uh, you sleepily go through the motions and change his diaper, placing a new one beneath his bottom, wiping up the mess, and throwing away the ruined diaper. At least this is getting easier. <laughs> ben, it's late. What are you giggly about? Suddenly, Ben begins to spray! Jim, quick! There is no... Contain the mess. Watch the spray. Contain the mess. Fast as humanly possible, you flip the diver up and block the spray. That was way too close. <laughs> well, that diaper's a room. I'll uh, change him again. <laughs> Give me a second. He bounces Justine in your arms as Miles finishes up with Ben, and the two of you return to the living room with the twins. You sink into the couch and open up the top of your dress to nurse Justine while Miles feeds Ben another bottle. Justine's fingers grab at your breast as she eats hungrily, but you're too tired to care. At least they're quiet. Mm-hmm. Sounds nice. Are you even listening, Miles? Miles' eyes flutter as he fights to stay awake beside you. The only sound filling the room is the tiny suckles from the twins. <sighs> I feel like a milk machine. Am I a cow? <laughs> what? I feel like a cow. <laughs> Moo. Uh huh. Very funny. Sorry, I I can't think straight. <laughs> Apparently, I can't. <laughs> you burp Justine for a bit, and then blurely trade babies with uh, Miles. All right, Ben. All you've got to do is drink and go to sleep. Try to get Ben to latch, but instead he just starts crying against your breast. <laughs> Come on, little guy. I know you're hungry. <laughs> Oh, Justine won't need now either. You fumble for the pacifiers on the table, but they just keep screaming. Pit and Boone wake from the slumber in the corner and trot in front of the couch. Pit cocks her head to the side as Boone howls at your feet. Ooh. You're fine, it's just a bit of crying. It'll stop soon. Winds grow louder and louder until you hardly hear yourself think. What do they want? Let's swaddle them again. Two of you carry the twins to the nursery and swaddle them with their feet sticking out. But the cries turn into newborn screams piercing the entire room. Go to sleep, please. <laughs> it's not working. They don't even seem sleepy. <laughs> uh, what, what, what did you sleep? I mean, say. I said they seem sleepy. You don't. Your yells only cause the twins to cry even louder. It's become a shouting contest at this point. You look around, trying to figure out what the babies need. Babies need playtime. Babies need a diaper chain. Babies need food. Babies need sleep. Well, no shit about the sleep, but... You really want to mess up the schedules so we never sleep? We need to do something or else they'll be over-tired and this will only get worse. <laughs> I'm trying, I'm just so goddamn tired! <laughs> I can't with this book right now. The so saying your phone goes off, you can barely hear the ringtone over the noise of the crying twins. Who the hell is calling me this late at night? Glare at the unknown number and hang up, only to notice the room is silent. I never did. What happened? I think they like the music. Hush, little baby, don't say a word. Mama's gonna buy you a mockingbird. You rock Ben in your arms and glance at Miles to join. All right. <clears throat> and if that mockingbird don't sing, Daddy's gonna buy you a diamond. What the hell was that? <laughs> no, 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 no. 
Queens finally fall fast asleep in your arms. You and Miles carefully transfer them to the crib. You place a blanket over them to keep them warm, leaving their feet sticking out. We did it. And just look at their cute little booties. Mm, what I added to our photo album. Your heart melts as you watch Justine and Ben's green and yellow knitted booties twitch. That's your phone over on the nearby dresser. Take a special photo to commemorate the baby's first night at home with their little booties. You take your phone from Miles and pull up the camera. You line up the shot and snap the photo. Look at the little booties. Mm, they're the cutest peanuts ever. They look more like footballs to me. Shh, let's enjoy the moment. You added the tiny feet picture to your photo album. Mm, cute. Sleep well, little ones. Mommy loves you. The two of you stealthily leave the nursery and return to the sanctuary of your bedroom. They're such a handful, but I love them so much, I don't even know, uh, didn't even know that was possible. I feel like the Grinch hot girl two times or whatever. We're really doing this whole parenting thing. We're a family. There's just one thing left to make official. Miles drops to one knee and holds out a familiar box. I'd recognize that ring anywhere. I'm not one for words or speeches, but today's different. A couple days ago, I asked you a question. I didn't know what life would hold, but I knew I loved you. And now I love us. I love our family. Miles takes your hand in his. So for the second time, Jen Cassidy, will you marry me? Miles, you finally got the timing right, really? Yes. Sorry, I'm just so happy. I've been waiting for this for so long. Yes, Miles. I'll marry you. He slides the ring on your left hand and you reel him in for a kiss. I love you, Miles. I love you too. After the first night, the following weeks pass by in a blur as the babies grow bigger. One day, you take the twins over to Clint's house for a play date. You play with Justine on the floor, reading her a book, while Clint bounces Ben on his lap. This was a gift from your dad. The shadows dance in pale moonlight and sing a woeful song of fright. <laughs> I still can't even get over how big they've gotten. Just then you hear a doorbell ring, Clint hands off Ben to you and answers the front door. Reveal... Gavin, Joel, and Jebediah, you notice a downcast look on each of their faces. Lynn, it's the worst, the horror, the agony. For once, Gavin isn't exaggerating. This was nailed to the Covington Manor front door earlier today. Jebediah hands Clint an official-looking piece of paper, his eyes widen in shock as he skims the page. You hurry over and read over his shoulder. Mayor Finch has decreed Covington Manor an unsafe hazard due to code violations? He's condemning the building, and they're going to demolish it? How is that even possible? That's not how this shit works. Your babies are growing up at the Covington Manor and may be coming down. Can you save Clint's family home? Find out in the next chapter. So, here's the thing is, who inspected the home? You know, I'll tell you one thing. We've, we have we let him go, right? We let him go. Before I... Uh, you know what? Hold on. If you don't want to listen to this small rant that's maybe 30 seconds long, like, share, and subscribe. Head down to the description below. Links to social media, Discord, and if you like to support me and my content, feel free to join that Discord. It's a great place where you can hang out with me as well as a lot of other people. Chat, share things, whatever. Otherwise, so we let Finch... We didn't investigate Finch becoming mayor. For whatever reason. We let it just go. Now, coming to the manor, without an inspection, without anything, is going to be demolished. Like, no? No, that's that's not how any of this works. But anyway, it's Pixelberry. I digress. Peace out. Oh, one more thing. The baby diaper thing. I have never in my entire life ever sat 
because basically my brothers are, 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 are special needs, right? Okay. So 18 years I've been changing their diapers. Okay. I have never pulled the dirty diaper away while well, especially they have, you know, their, their, their bathroom. And then been like, let me go ahead and wipe their butts now. No, you typically keep the dirty diaper there. You wipe the butts. And then you roll it up. And then you put on the clean diaper before putting the old one in the trash. Then it's all said and done. No accidents happen. Then you take the diaper and throw it in the trash. I don't understand. I don't understand this this thing with Pixelberry and the whole, yeah, put that new diaper down. You haven't finished wiping, but put that new diaper down. Who is a mother and or father in the comment section below wants to go ahead and tell me your way of doing it? Because I feel like I've never had like anything go wrong because I've used that philosophy of, you know, if everything does go wrong, I use the bad diaper. Which, nothing ever really does go wrong. I mean, most likely everything has already gone wrong in the diaper itself, but I digress. Thanks for watching. Peace out.